This is a video of the new fridge freezer from Costway. This is a 55 liter or 58 quart model. I chose to go with this one because I felt like the size was gonna best suit my needs and at the price of $427.95, it was definitely better than spending $1,100 on a Dometic. So interesting, they gave us a $2,000 cashback card, probably for sweepstakes of some bio ice packs, which is kind of funny because this is a freezer, or a powered freezer, powered fridge freezer. Some nice boxing for the cables. Looking at the brick, uh, charging brick, it is it is pretty high quality. It's pretty nice. Don't have any complaints about that. First impressions of the cord on this uh, 12 volt adapter, it's pretty nice, but the the adapter itself is is pretty cheap and uh, doesn't feel very high quality. Not sure if there's a fuse in there or what, but I guess we'll find out how that holds up. All right, now time to see what this actually looks like outside of the box. So yeah, so first impressions are, it looks it looks pretty great. It looks nice, uh, the redesign definitely looks a lot more high quality and a lot more uh, professional than the other ones considering the price. One of the key features on the new redesign is this double open lid, a double sided hinge so it opens on both sides doesn't matter which way you put it in the car and it fully detaches which is quite convenient so inside it comes with a basket for whatever you're putting in it you can pull all of it out at one time so you're not digging through and and whatnot trying to find stuff that you cram down in the bottom so that's a nice little feature Uh, it also has a drain plug in the bottom. So this uh, this drain plug is for condensation and if you spill something, I guess, or if you want to rinse it out, it just pops in and out. So looking at it, it looks pretty great. It looks uh, real nice, has two vents on either side and one in the front for the compressor. One thing I don't like about it is on the lid, it does have this pretty big gap uh, for where the hinge sits and where it latches. Um, there is a reason for that. Uh, we'll get into that later. The handles, pretty high quality, I would say. It's an aluminum rod attached to some thick ABS. And uh, the buttons are nice, click. They, they click pretty good. The LCD looks nice. Uh, two, two USB ports in the front. Some Costway stamping. So this is definitely the cheapest part of the fridge, by far. It just feels cheap, like a cheap little add-on. But it is nice to have a little, little extra storage, I guess. Uh, they did throw in a bottle opener and corkscrew which is a really nice little touch, yes. But I can't see that holding it for very long. I can see that breaking, so I guess we'll have to see. Peeling off that little sticker, I did realize later that there were already scratches underneath that piece of cellophane, which is kind of a bummer because uh, if they're shipping them from the factory with scratches already on them, then quality control isn't too good. Alternatively to Costway, I did find this on Alibaba for $160. As I think it was Coolbo, they were selling for sample prices for that much. And 
if you live near a port and you want to go through them, then that'd be a great option. But if you don't, or you don't want to make the drive through a port, then you can get it from Costway, or I believe there are, there is one other brand on Amazon selling this. But Costway definitely has the best price right now for this size. Here I am throwing it in the back of my first gen 4Runner, seeing how it'll fit and the look of it. I just got back from a couple camping trips, putting my tailgate panel to use, and that's why the car is pretty filthy right now. But that is what these cars are meant for, so. I replaced my factory rear cargo light with this panel for extra uh, inputs. You know, got a couple USBs and a 12 volt socket on there. Looking at this again, not sure what this thing is for. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. Or if this top red part is supposed to even be on there. So I'm gonna plug it into the cigarette lighter. It, it just wobbles around and feels super cheap. So I guess we'll see how that's gonna hold up in the long run. I can't imagine it doing well. It does come with these nice little Velcro ties for the for the cable, but if you take them off, then uh, you might as well just throw it away because you're probably gonna lose it or whatnot. So plugging in for the first time, seeing uh, what, the, what the startup process is like. So I flip on the panel and it's on going through some some weird boot up sequence and then when I first turned it on I had this little error error one so I later found out that that was for the voltage protection that it has on it so it has three levels of battery voltage protection so once your battery dips to a certain threshold then the cooler will kick off and it will not turn on so it doesn't drain your battery and you're stuck without being able to start your car, which is a nice feature, but I wish they would tell you that. Just kidding, they did. Yeah. I got the user manual and a little before you start guide, went through and learned that there are three different protection levels and an eco mode along with another bunch of weird things that I couldn't figure out exactly what they did besides tell me. So thanks. All right, finally got it to turn on and just going through the Fahrenheit, Celsius, uh, lowest battery protection, medium and highest, and then eco mode and back to max. So that's how you navigate through there. You just, you just click through the settings button. Toggling through the temperature, you click to the desired temperature, it'll blink five times and then tell you what the cooler's temperature currently is. So mine's at, mine's at 84 because I just plugged it in. If you hold down the settings button for five seconds, then it goes through these E1 to E4, F1 to F2 or three, I guess. Not sure what they do. It said they do and tell you uh, some information, but I'm not sure. So, so fitment with the tailgate closed. It's pretty good. Um, plugged in in the front, which is one thing I do not like, and it actually fits perfect. Look at that. So the fifty-eight port one literally is meant for this car in my opinion so what i don't like about the power cord being in the front is you have to let out a bunch of slack if you're if you're gonna want to pull the cooler out when you get to your campsite you know or just gonna tug on it 
So I, I would have liked to see them put it in the back. So then it would, it would be a lot easier to pull in and out, especially if you have a slide drawer. So you're gonna tuck the wires on the side and worry about get them getting pinched. Another thing that I found is once it's opened, uh, it, it does not have the greatest lashing, I guess, on the on the lid. Kind of rocks back and forth. The seal is nice, and not sure why they put these cup holders on the top. Cause who really uses those? Come on. Additionally, they have a light, which I do like in case if it's dark. The basket does have a divider, which is removable, which is cool. Also, this, this is what that gap is for. So when you open it, it slides in behind it. So I don't I don't really care about that too much, but here's the here's some more rocking. But when it is closed, it does not shake at all. It's pretty stiff, pretty solid. Uh, I don't feel like it's gonna leak too much, too much cool air. So here's a look at the hinge design. It's a nice piece of stainless steel with these plastic little clips. I grab a hold of the latch. Take another look inside. It comes with all of the settings and everything you need to know, which is in the user manual, but who's gonna carry around that piece of paper? So you might as well just throw that away. And it's nice to have that in case if you forget a specific thing, you don't have service, you need to know what it's trying to tell you. Just go look at the lid. So here's my vehicle running, pumping 14 volts to the back. And uh, it doesn't seem to be draining too much power, but I will do a, an in-depth review on long-term usage or, a, or like a one to three month review. So stay tuned for that. Don't worry about the screen flickering. It doesn't do that in person. It's just from the shutter speed of the camera. And that's the review. So. Uh, Give me a like or uh, give me a subscribe. And if you want to see more or have any specific questions about this, please let me know because I'm more than happy to answer any of them for you. And you guys have a great day and stay tuned for future content and stay safe out there.